Viewer discretion is advised, which I think means shh, be discreet, don't tell anybody. I'm holding here a part of a battleship game. Battleship is played, I'm sure you've played it before, with a grid system where you fire things at things and uh, you use letters and numbers to do it. So if you say, I am shooting at E4, well, there's the E line, uh -huh. and there's the four line. They only meet in one spot, so that's where you're shooting, and uh, there's no mistake. Battleship, along with the Microsoft Excel, if you're a super nerd like me, uh, use a number system and a letter system. Math, on the other hand, does it a little differently. It uses numbers and more numbers. In fact, it uses numbers going in many directions and starting with zero, which is how sometimes you feel when you're asked to understand coordinates. So I'm gonna show you a system right now so that you can remember what is going on on our Cartesian plane. And I'm gonna start by drawing a very bad version of it for you right here. Before I continue, this is what a plane's gonna look like for you. At least this is the skeleton of it. Uh, you've got two lines that you gotta pay attention to, after which I'm gonna add a bunch more little grid boxes so it looks more like graph paper. But right now, I'm gonna point out two things. One is this side to side line, X coordinate. This is the X coordinate line. And then this one is the Y line. Those of you who play video games, uh, like me, I'll admit, uh, the y-axis is something that my brain always has a trouble with. And depending on what game it is, I always go into settings and invert the y-axis so that I look up and down in a way that feels normal to me. Um, unfortunately, I've learned how to play both ways and now neither of them feel normal to me. Figure that out. So this one runs side to side with positive on this side and negative on this side, just like a number line, where we conventionally have like positive one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to infinity going this way, and then negative one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 all the way this way. And this one is rigged positive on top and negative on bottom, just like a thermometer, right? So it's a number line and a thermometer. Looks like a little face. I didn't mean for that to happen, but this is zero comma zero, this spot right here, where the two lines meet. If they want to see zero comma zero, there's nowhere else that zero comma zero exists except that one spot right there. But for today, I'm going to put a little house on zero comma zero, and I'll explain why in a second. This is a house. This is Mikey's house. Mikey lives in this house right here. Okay. So really quickly, I added part of a number line to get you used to the idea of what's going on on the X line. So uh, here is positive one, positive two, positive three, and then I'm pretty sure you can figure out what that one is. And that one, that one, that one, and it goes on and on and on. And then this is a down count. One, two, three, four, five, six, negative seven, um, so on that way. And these lines go on forever. Without end until I run into something that I can't draw on. Well, it's starting to get a little busier on the grid here, but you can see that I've got positive one, positive two, positive three on the y-axis right here, and then negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. And I've drawn this so well that there could not be any way that anyone could do a better job, even with the most expensive computer from Sweden. I think this looks great. I'd like to pause and thank the chemical engineers who decided that in their infinite wisdom, light yellow should be an effective color to be used on white boards. As you can see, the work speaks for itself. I'd like to think that all my work here has added to your overall understanding, but I'm afraid that uh, what I've really drawn is the classic tartan of a neon Highlander, and so I'm gonna try to explain it to you uh, just to hopefully make some sense of all of this. This, I'm going to say generously urine-colored corner here, 
all the x's are positive and all the y's are positive. Uh -huh. So every time you've got a coordinate that's got a positive x number and a positive y number, if you get two numbers and they say like positive 3 comma positive 3, it's got to be in this corner. You can argue as to where, I mean, given these amazing lines, you have no problem finding it, but I'd say positive 3, positive 3, positive 3, positive 3, okay? Down here, this is negative and that is negative. So these are negative x and negative y coordinates. So if someone says to you, find negative 4 comma negative 4, again, no problem. There's negative 4 and negative 4, and they meet right here. And that's where it lives and nowhere else. Okay, I don't know if this is in frame, but hopefully it is. Uh, this is negative x territory. This side of the grid is all negative x territory. And this top half of the grid is positive y territory. Why? Because positive 1y, positive 2y, positive 3y. This whole piece here is positive y. And then on the number line, the x, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, forever, these are both negative x quadrants. And they're, they're, they're broken into four quadrants, right? And then if uh, these are both positive and these are both negative and that's one of each, and this is also going to be one of each. So this is positive x negative y. Well, with all of this information, I can't imagine why anyone would have a hard time remembering something very important that Battleship fixed, but math did not fix. And it is as follows. How in the heck do you remember which one comes first? Both of the examples I picked were positive 3, po positive 3. I think, well, you know, no argument there. But what often happens, well, what exclusively happens in this problem, is that you are given something like these coordinates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Positive 4, comma, negative 1. Okay, so which one do you do first and why? I'm going to go through a little example referring back to Mikey, who lives in Mikey's house. You were wondering when Mikey was going to come back. Mikey is back. Mikey lives right here. And Mikey works for the city of Mathopolis. Mathopolis is a wonderful city to visit because it is well maintained by precisely one worker, Mikey. And Mikey gets instructions every day from the mayor of Mathopolis. The mayor says, you have to go to positive four, negative one. So Mikey starts at his house and he walks out the front door of his house and he, the first thing he does is he walks down the sidewalk and he walks in a positive four direction, which means positive on the sidewalk. One, two, three, four. And then he has to walk in a negative one direction, meaning that he has to open a manhole cover right here and go one step down to here to fix some kind of underground cable. And then when he's done, he goes home. So that is positive four comma one. The next day, Mikey gets new information from the mayor and he says, go to negative three, positive five. So Mikey starts at his house and does the exact same thing. He gets out the front door and he walks down the sidewalk. That's the first instruction, negative three. And then he finds out that he's got to fix a broken window up on positive five. So he gets one of those uh, trucks with a nice ladder on top, only the best for Mikey, and he goes up one, two, three, four, five. I don't even have it marked here, but we know that this is where the broken window is. Right that spot, right here. And then when he's done fixing the window, he goes down the side of the building and blah, 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 all the way home. Again, when these two coordinates are different, numbers, it's not the nice square right here, you have to pay attention to which one comes first. Thankfully, Mikey knows how to read his instructions. Mikey starts in his house 
and he's told to go to positive four, positive three. So he walks down the sidewalk first, one, two, three, four, and then goes up to positive three, one, two, three. And he, I don't know, polishes a, a street light. There you go, good old Mikey. And then he goes down three and over four, and he's home for a nice sleep. Okay? Okay. Positive five, negative six. So take a second before I start telling you what the answer is and think about what does Mikey do first. First thing he does, he comes out of his house and he walks down the sidewalk. I know I paused. I know it felt like preschool for a minute there, but I'm just trying to get your brain to do what I'm doing before I do it for you. So here we go. Positive five down the sidewalk. Positive five. One, two, three, four, five. And then down negative six and he gets one of those like rope harnesses and lowers himself down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he fixes, uh, you know, sewage line that's backed up full of things you're not supposed to flush. You know those wipes they tell you that you're allowed to flush? You're not allowed to flush those. Don't flush those. Might get work trying to unclog all that that you put down there. Now, like I said, this grid can keep going. Uh, we just have to imagine what the numbers would be after eight. There is a number after eight. Uh, mathematicians are still trying to name it, but I'm pretty sure that you could figure out a name for it uh, in the short term. Uh, seven, eight, something, 10, and so on and so forth, and this way, so on and so forth, and this way, so on and so forth, and this way, so on and so forth, uh, until the mayor gives Mikey this instruction. Okay, so that's also fair game. Uh, Mikey can leave his house and start walking 21 steps in this direction down the sidewalk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21. Okay, so now he has to go down. Uh, 15 steps. The other coordinate was negative 15, which is down. So we count down negative 15. So this is negative, uh, this is zero, and then negative one, negative two, negative three, nine, negative four, negative five, five negative six, 12, negative seven, 13, eight, 14, 15. This spot in the grid is negative 21, negative 15. And Mikey digs a tunnel all the way down here to investigate the possibility of damage to their uh, water supply uh, by, I don't know, fracking or a kid who threw uh, a gum wrapper in the drain sewer on the street, whatever. Mikey's down here. He figures out that there's no leaks and there's no problems. He does find that gum wrapper. And then he turns around to go back up. Unfortunately, the rope ends right there. He had to use a broken rusty ladder to get the rest of the way down, but the last five rungs in the ladder have broken off, and so Mikey is stuck in this hole. Days go by. Mikey yells to try to get help, but nobody can hear him out of the hole because he's too far out of town. He tries his cell phone. Cell phone gets no reception down there. The battery runs out. He tries to send a message on his voicemail so that people would know where he is. Makes no contact. The high quality two-way radio from Motorola that he was given by the city cannot get a signal back to the mayor's office. The mayor, who rarely pays attention to the important details of the city, forgets the instructions that he gave Mikey. Mikey sits at the bottom of the hole and waits. He tries to drink some of the water that seeps through the mud, but ultimately he is hungry. Days go by. 
little by little, Mikey, who's always known for his optimism and his hard work, begins to lose hope. Inevitably, Mikey begins to fall asleep for longer periods of time, trying to yell, but his voice comes out like a hoarse crack. He's a broken man, broken by time, underground, except that it's not like how coal has turned into a diamond. He is made of carbon and he will return to the earth. For little by little, Mikey accepts the fact that in the diligent performance of his duties, he has managed to eventually dig his own grave slash toilet. Ultimately, Mikey dies in the worst way, alone. Now, we are stuck with a question. There is an inquiry. The city wants to know why did Mikey have to die? What was the point of it all? Surely there must have been some reason that Mikey had to sacrifice his life and get down there and use up the one good rope that they had, cutting off all opportunity for them to actually get him out. Sure, they can put a statue up there. Sure, they could fill this with cement and pretend the whole thing didn't happen. But the single most important question is, why did Mikey have to die? Was it because of unsafe working conditions? Was it an irresponsible mayor? Do you know why Mikey died? He died for one important reason. To remind you that in the story, every day, Mikey leaves his house and goes down the sidewalk and then goes up and down. That's why Mikey died for you. I hope that you appreciate what some of us in the education world and city management world are willing to do for you so that you will remember the order of the ordered pairs. X is sidewalk and Y is whole. Or tower, you never know. Anyway, I hope that sticks in your mind. I will uh, see you again on this YouTube channel.